does not appear that we have a quorum, but we can still have a discussion. And I think, Meredith, you have a statement at the beginning of this. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, all members of the Downtown Winston-Salem Business Improvement District Advisory Committee are participating virtually. For virtual meetings, when there is a vote, it will be necessary to take a roll call vote. Um, a committee member will be recognized and will verbally state their vote. Um, without a quorum, we will be taking no official votes today. Um, the meeting can be assessed by the City of Winston-Salem's YouTube page. So um, without a quorum, we cannot approve the minutes, but we can have a report from the staff, city staff. Um, as you can tell, our numbers are, are continuing to dwindle here with the committee. Um, I am working hand in hand with the mayor's office and Jason um, to try to get the applications and to um, fill these vacancies on our committee um, with the appropriate uh, classified people um for the downtown businesses restauranteers and that sort of thing so um we're working on that to get our committee members back to um full strength so that quorums are a bit easier as well but just to make sure we have that diversification and um, all the the best um number of folks to that can represent downtown on this committee so um that's ongoing um, I'm hoping to get some names um, here soon with the application so that the mayor and city council can appoint those and approve those persons um, for our committee. Um, as far as projects going on downtown, um, as you all um, obviously see, um, everything is ongoing. Um, the ribbon cutting for Marshall Park is, I believe, April 15th. Um, so that's exciting to finally have that park um, ready to open to the public and being in the heart of downtown um, help with, with the look and the beautification of downtown. Um, as far as um, transportation projects, um, working on getting some additional updates. Um, we have a new transportation director that I think officially takes on the new role. His name is Jeff Bansler. Um, he's been with the department for a while, but he's our new transportation director as of April, beginning of April. So um, it'll be good to have him and um, get any updates we can from him regarding the various projects going on, um, especially with the road conversions right now. Um, that's all I have from the city side, unless there are any questions. Jason, do you want to provide an update on your side with the bid? Sure. Uh, I did have one question on the city side. Um, as far as sure. the, the redirecting of streets, what's the time? So um, my understanding is first and second street is it's pretty much we're getting there. There's I think a few smaller segments left. Some of the intersections still need some work, but they were waiting um, to complete that work during the main and Liberty conversions. So um, my understanding from DOT is that we're working with Duke Energy to ensure those poles are ordered and coming in so that installation does not take as long as it did with First and Second Street. So, um, so th that's kind of the next phase of the project where my understanding is we're still kind of in that planning phase, but very much getting close to the actual pole conversion, which would then allow for the milling of the street and then the repaving and remarking. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Jason. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm going to share the screen if that's possible. Should be good to go. Sorry about that, Jason. That's okay. Well. Okay, the first thing is the um, budget. And if you look at the budget, I assumed a $30,000 increase in general revenue, which is roughly the projected, and I know that will be updated. 
And what we what we normally do is we proportionately just increase or decrease based on what the total number is from each category. And essentially what I've done is shown the existing fiscal year and the proposed budget year with the increases included at the same uh, percentages as the previous year. Um, last year was a pretty lean year, but the workload for us, I wanted to show you guys some of the things that we've been working on. Um, let's see here. Sorry about this, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Let me share the screen that I was hoping to share. Sorry about that. Now, all right, what do you guys see? A PowerPoint? Uh, kind of thing. Okay. All right. So this is the budget. And one of the things that I wanted to highlight is that we would like to do a new website landing page update. And we also want to update our holiday specials and um, uh, advertising graphics. We are updating our downtown plan. We also have some issues that, for instance, the picture on the left shows Liberty Street. These old historic lamp posts have been getting beat up. The one on the right shows the southbound view from Art Park. And you can see the lamps all are working, but they need to be cleaned. But here, We've had two knocked down, and the one at the end isn't working. And so it creates a bit of a dark spot here. And if one of the things that I wanted to talk to you guys about is I would like to try to talk to the folks on Liberty Street to see if we could replace these with standard Duke Energy lampposts. That way, maintenance would be assured by Duke Energy rather than the city when they're historic character like this, you take uh, the city takes on the role of maintaining them forevermore. These have been here for a long time. And I think that the Liberty main resurfacing just on Liberty Street, leave the lamppost on Trade Street. I'd like to see us go to a standard lamppost when we do the construction. The reason is, is that light is just paramount for importance in public safety and these we just can't find parts for them anymore and when they fall apart they can't be replaced um so what what do you two or tony vivian mike obviously you would want us to talk to the folks on liberty street before you had any more comments and that's really the next step but i just wanted to hear what you guys had to say what are you talking about in terms of cost to do a replacement? I really don't know, but you're probably talking about $5,000 a light. It's something so that you, we could. You're talking about talking to the folks on Liberty Street. In that block of Liberty Street, you have two occupied businesses, if I'm not yeah. Along yeah. with Roar that really um they're they're more they're as much on Seventh Street as they are on Liberty. So you have three occupied businesses in that block. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. So um sometimes I don't know. I mean, I think the biggest thing is that you have proper lighting. Uh, if you if you have to get permission from everybody to do anything, I don't think we'd get much done. Yeah, that's a good point. I um, 
I think, um, but I, I think what I'll do though, is I'll gather more information and where this started for me was over the holidays, a light was knocked down. It's the one that should be in the middle. Mm-hmm. And then I started getting complaints from the folks in the APRIS building about the lighting and everybody, everybody's pointing the finger. I don't know if you guys know this, but Rod Ring retired at the DOT. Not only did uh, Tonique retire, but so did Rod Ring. And so Jeff has got his hands full for sure, as um, Meredith talked about. But one of the things that you ask, like if you were to use CityLink to report this light, I mean, they really don't have anything they can do. It's just hands up in the air. They put like an orange cone in its spot and uh, it's we're just we got to face the uh the reality of these historic lamps we can get new lamps that would be maintained by duke energy that look historic but they're not going to be these and the cost of replacing the lamps would be a bid expense as opposed to a city expense or a duke expense yeah, it would be a city expense. And what we would probably do is see if we can get it paid for during the construction, but we would supplement it with bid funds if need be, which we've done to grease the skids on doing the project. But that would be up to the bid committee if you guys want to do that. In the city council. I'll move on to the next project. You guys don't have to contemplate this more, but just these are ideas about funding. One of the other yeah. things that- I will say, Jason, that I think it's important that we have good lighting, especially around the park area. And as more and more people are <clears throat> on that area, that, that part of Liberty Street, you know, we wanted to build up Liberty Street for years and years, shall we say decades. And so it's finally starting to happen. Um, and we want to make sure that we can keep it as safe and as um, appealing as possible. So good lighting, you know, you have you have reasonable lighting coming from the park, but the park isn't brightly lit, which is fine. But if you augment that with, with street lighting, you have a good walkable space there. And we want to make sure that happens. So I'm I'm all for it. Thank you for your feedback. I, I appreciate that. And it's very helpful because, you know, it'll just, it'll be something where I think I'd like to get priced what I think should happen and see if, if it could happen, um, the time frame, and then answer any questions and get any support from somebody that would be just... I've even talked to Richard Miller about it, and he seemed to be in support of it. He was probably the most adamant about the historic streetlights, as you may recall. He was probably, and I said, well, we can have the historic streetlights, but, I mean, when they break down, you know, we'll just never be able to fix it. Um, right here on this picture is a um, just some things. We have a couple of things on the street that I need to get rid of. These are owned by the city. And they're not being utilized anymore. Um, but solar power, you know, you always got to have somebody maintaining facilities. But this picture is a 412 North Trade Street, and it's been vacant for about six years. It had a law office in it before. It's right on four, uh, Trade Street north of 4th uh, between Teresa Duncan's Retail and the Convenience Guru. The reason I'm showing it is a before and then a partial after. The downtown clean team stores its equipment, its billy goat. Currently, all of the uh, trash cans, all of the materials that they need for their thing, like the snow, uh, uh, ice and banners and you name it, in the ground floor of the parking deck at the old Cherry Marshall parking deck behind where our office used to be in the Chatham building across the street from the Stevens Center in the ground floor. And we were notified a month ago that they wanted to convert that space to storage space for renters downtown and other people to put their furniture and other belongings, folks that were downsizing. 
And so we were given 60 days to move out and we scoured downtown for places to move to. And this space is a space that we inquired about and the landlord um, has made it available to us for lease. And we have um, asked them for a couple of different things, which they've done. The inset here on the left of the door was moved out to the uh, street level and they did some painting. We're going to put some window clings in each of the windows here that look a little bit like our banners. <clears throat> and so I think that'll be, I wish we had the funding to cover up the stone, which is really not all that appealing, but you know, in time, we'll probably be asked to leave here and a new tenant will move in, but you will see our clean team guys coming in and out of these doors with their material. And this will bring a little bit more life to this part of town, which is right near CVS and the transit station where we do have problems with folks and uh, soliciting and um, causing problems uh, that you know are, are there every day. We also, on the next um, slide here, I wanted to show you guys that we were able to complete, and I'm not, oh, 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 there we go. Um, we were able to complete a, um, a before and after of this with a window cling. Looks a lot better. I think I may have showed you that before. We're going to be upgrading our banners this year. Um, new banners in downtown and a lot of other things, but just maybe I'll make this a more robust presentation at our, when we have the quorum next month to approve the budget. And um, also mindful of your time today, but um, I wanted to get some feedback on the lighting so I could start and maybe come back to you guys next month with some more details. All right, thank you, Jason. Um, did you get the kind of feedback that you need to, for your next step, as far as the lighting is concerned? Yes, ma'am. Does anyone have any questions for Jason about the budget? All right. Then if uh, there is nothing else, um, though we did not have a quorum to do uh, approvals and such or votes, I would ask that um, we get a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. It is moved. Um, thank you very much for coming today and hopefully we'll see everybody and a few more faces next month. Yeah, thank you, well, Meredith, for all your help. Speaking of face, I couldn't get my face up there today. I need <laughs> a, a different laptop and for whatever reason, I'm having technical difficulties with the video. But Tony, your presence is always felt and we appreciate it. <laughs> Thank y'all. Y'all have a good day. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you all.